Today we're talking about storage. So I'm gonna give you a masterclass in all the different types of ways you can store data on Replit and what you should be using when, as well as how you can think about making decisions about what to store where. And so after this video, I think you'll have everything you need to know to go build some amazing apps with some amazing data. Um, but the problem is that you know data is everywhere, but we don't know what to do with it all the time. And there are lots of things like user preferences or images, videos, CSVs, PDFs, all of these things. Uh, maybe you have settings or configurations that your users are creating. Um, and maybe you have sensitive data uh, for your application. Where do we put all of these different things? Um, and so again, the problem, there are a bunch of different types of data storage. We don't really know where each type of data should live. Um, and what happens if things like our app restarts or we lose that data or it crashes or we make a mistake, right? How do we keep our development environment separate from what our users see? That's another really big question uh, that's been thrown around a lot in the era of vibe coding, right? Uh, ultimately, what if something goes wrong? These are all questions that we're asking ourselves. So four things to keep in mind as we walk through this video, because they'll be very specific to you, um, are first, what type of data are you storing? So identify exactly what it is we need to store. How is it being read and written? Is it being written by your code? Are you just dragging and dropping files? Are your users creating this data? Are you pulling it from an external source? This is important. Will it change? How is your data evolving, right? I think a, a big uh, headwind most people encounter is when they create a database and then they have to change the data structure. So how do you expect the data to evolve? That's important to consider upfront. And is that data sensitive? We're gonna address all of these in this presentation. But I'm gonna give you a decision tree with the four different types of storage on Replit up front, so you have all the information you need and then we're gonna break down each one. So are you storing source code, configuration files or even static assets? When I say static assets, I just mean like a logo um, or a small image. If so, you're gonna use the file system. We'll talk about that in this video. Are you storing structured data that needs to persist? If so, we'll talk. you're gonna use the database. We're gonna talk about that as well. Are you storing images, videos, documents, or other unstructured data? You're going to use app storage. Are you storing API keys or auth tokens? If so, you're going to use secrets. So we're going to walk through these one by one. First, I'm going to give you a high level overview. So we have our file system. That's like the file pane you see in the workspace. Uh, it's good for code assets and configuration files. Notably, the persistence is development only. We'll talk about what that means. We have our database under the hood running Postgres for structured data storage good for user profiles, app data, always persisting. App storage, which is our object storage solution uh, under the hood running Google Cloud, good for unstructured data and media, images, videos, documents, etc. And we have secrets, which are technically a type of storage. They're for sensitive environment variables like API keys, credentials, and other secrets. So let's start with the file system. So you can see here on the image um, on your left, I believe, <laughs> we have our file system. The file system is your Replit app's local files and directories. So if you're building a project, you have to write code. If you're using agent, agent is writing code. You can see here, it's going to be writing to the file system. Now, in most projects, it's very common to store other static assets there. Now, what do I mean? I mean things like images, logos, icons, images that aren't changing, right? Maybe you have a blog and you're adding images. You can just use the file system. That's totally normal. Um, what we have to understand, though, is, is how the file system works. So you get about 50 gigs of storage per app um, per account, and that's for core. Uh, for free, it's two gigs of storage. Um, and this file system is automatically checkpointed if you're using agent. Now, if you're not using agent, it is powered by Git, so you can also make Git commits on your own. Uh, more than that, though, under the hood, Replit does version control the file system. So even if you don't use Git, you can always kind of go back to any version of any file within your file system. Uh, and so really we've made it such that it's impossible to lose data uh, when working in a Replit app unless you delete it. And so you can also connect your app to GitHub and sync the file system that way. And at any time, you can download your files. So what did I mention about persistence? Uh, we're going to talk about some file system characteristics. Snapshot. You can think about the file system as a snapshot. So when you click deploy, what we do is we take like a picture of your file system and we put it on the internet for people to use. So people go see your app, they engage with it. But what that is, is like a static picture of the files that you had before. What does that mean? That means that if your app restarts, you know, like 
things happen in the cloud a lot of times, especially with auto scale deployments. You know, we're spinning them down to zero to save you money. You should check out my video on deployments if you're unfamiliar with an auto scale deployment. Um, your app's going to restart a lot. Every time your app restarts, the file system goes back to that picture. So if you have like user uploads and you're just storing them in the file system, or if people are interacting with your app and it's writing data, that data is going to be lost when the file system restarts, either because it's an auto scale deployment or because reserve VMs, they have a very high amount of up of uptime, but there's still a possibility that it restarts. So that's important to note. So what does that mean? It means that if we want to store data persistently, we need another option. And that's what I was talking about earlier. Um, now, during development, if you restart your app, obviously the files aren't going anywhere, so that's important to mention. Uh, but it's good for things like code, assets, temporary files, etc. Now, as I mentioned, agents always checkpointing things. We have a GitHub integration. We have a Git inside the file system itself, um, and Replit actually version controls things separately. So there are many ways to restore that data. You can check out our docs if you'd like to learn a little bit more about that. Um, so it's always safe. But what the persistence aspect means is that you shouldn't be storing user data here. Again, think about it like painting a picture or taking a picture and sharing it with someone. You create something and you share it with them. Um, uh, actually, a picture is a really great analogy. You get a print of a photo and you give it to your friend. If they mark up that print, if they add things to it, if they're a drawing on it, your original copy doesn't change, only their copy does. And you can think about everybody that's visiting as getting different copies. So if your app restarts, right, the picture is going to revert to the original version. So that's a good analogy. Uh, so the TLDR here is use the file system to store code assets, logos or other unchanging static assets, and temporary files, and nothing else. Now you might be saying, what do I do with those other files? We're going to talk about that in this video. Database. So the Replit database, we got a screenshot here. What's a database? We don't have enough time to explain all the ins and outs of databases. I used to work as a data engineer. You could make an entire career out of studying databases. But a database is composed of schema and tables. So you can think about it like this. You have one database. That database has many schema. And those schema have a bunch of tables. And a table you know, is kind of like a linked spreadsheet for data. And you might have a database, which we create for your in your app. And that database can have schema and tables. And you can see we have multiple tables here. And these tables are all kind of uh, you know tables composed of rows and columns that kind of connect to each other. So you can think about it like a spreadsheet that maybe connects. Um, what else? So databases are stored by row, or at least these types of databases are. And so as you're building your app, you might think, what is a good row-based data to store? Here in my example, I was building an app to, to care for plants. And so a care log, right? You have your date, you have an action, you have things that you're doing, or even a plant identifier. These are all good options to store by row. Don't think about having to learn everything about data architecture. I highly recommend prompting AI, whether that's agent, Claude, ChatGPT, Gemini, whatever. Hey, help me understand what a good data structure would be for my idea. Help me understand what makes sense to store in a database. Very highly recommended. And databases are ideal for structured or semi-structured data. One of the really cool things about databases is that they're great for storing JSON. So if you're familiar with JSON data, it's actually kind of a, a neat technique for storing data that you think might change over time or that might evolve. So definitely think about semi-structured data. Um, and again, prompt AI to learn a little bit more about these things as you approach them. And most importantly, databases are built into Replit. So you can spin them up within your apps and they persist. That's uh, pretty important. And we now have separate development and production databases, so you never use your data. So that's really, really cool. Um, Agent obviously can configure these for you. And here is a quick walkthrough of our database pane. So essentially, you can come into the database pane, you can click into tables, um, and you can go around and explore the different types of data that you have in addition to getting it from your users, writing it with agent, etc. So database characteristics. Databases survive restarts, so they're always going to keep your data safe no matter what. There's separate dev and production databases. So you can have a database basically that your users see and one that you test against and build against. They're good for user data, app settings, obviously row level data like we discussed. And every database comes with seven days of history. So if something like really blows up in either your prod or your dev database, you can roll it back any time. Finally, um, these are safe for user data because we have all of these really great guarantees. And 
a cool point is that you can connect to that database from anywhere. So just because the database lives inside your, your uh, sort of Replit app, you actually get what's called a connection string. Very sensitive, treat it like a password. But if you had other services that you wanted to connect to that database from, you can do that by providing that connection string, which is really unique, honestly. Um, and yeah, I think that's just about everything about databases. Obviously great uh, for building uh, row level data, great for storing user data. Um, one thing I found useful is to connect this to Replit Auth. So say you add users, then you can prompt agent to be like, okay, so now for my users, I want them to be able to upload PDFs or something, right? We'll talk about where you'd store those PDFs, um, but you could tie those uploads back to the user in the database, if that makes sense. Um, the TLDR here, use databases for storing structured and semi-structured, primarily text data in your application. And so how could you set up a database? You could ask agent, set up a database for my user auth system. It should do that automatically. Create a database table for storing blog posts with title, content, and timestamp. Help me connect my Express app to the database. All of these things are great. Or, you know, just, hey, add a database, you know, to help me build this thing. Next, we're gonna talk about app storage. So here's a little screenshot. Again, under the hood, this is object storage. It's just allowing you to upload files and stuff. What's app storage? It's persistent storage for files and large blobs, which is just like essentially a fly file or a piece of data. So you can store images, videos, documents, archives, CSVs, PDFs, you name it. You can put it in app storage. And you can access those files via URL. So if you've ever seen like a URL, like a link to an image that said like Amazon or S3 or Google Cloud, this is very similar. Uh, and you get a similar link to that image. That means that you can do things, right, like uh, embed videos in your app, embed images, allow users to upload things and then show them back to the user. And it scales independently of your app. So if you upload some giant file to this app storage, it's completely separate from what you're doing in the workspace. And basically it's just going into Google Cloud Storage. So it's going into like the separate storage system. Um, and you can use it with databases. I actually mentioned that before, like to upload a file, reference the file by a key and tie it back to a user. It's actually a really great pattern. Uh, what are some characteristics? Survives resource, it's totally persistent. So again, if you have a file system and you want users to be able to upload files or interact with data, or you want dynamic data, you have to use something like app storage. It's really great for files. And it's production ready because it's built on Google Cloud. It's really great for user uploads, images, videos, documents. I'll just keep saying that over and over again. Um, it's backed by Google Cloud, uh, so it's extremely reliable. Your data won't be lost. Um, and users can reliably upload and then access the files that they're creating. So the TLDR here is use app storage for larger files, multimedia, and unstructured data. What is unstructured data? It's like text. You know, if JSON is, is semi-structured, it could also technically, it could be unstructured, but um, if it's just free form or has a different uh, shape all the time, that's probably something you want to put in app storage and then process into a database, maybe if you're um, transforming it into structured data. So app storage setup, set up file upload for user profile pictures with app storage, create an image gallery that stores photos in app storage, help me upload and serve PDF documents for my app. These are all really good examples. Um, and now we're gonna talk about secrets because we talked about the main types of storage. Secrets are a type of storage. Um, and <laughs> surprise, hard coding secrets is bad. If you're putting API keys into your app anywhere, do not do that. Um, <laughs> it's not a good practice. By default, Agent won't do that for you. We've actually built Agent using best practices. So it stores secrets securely and then only services them in the back end. That's also important. Um, we want to store our credentials in secrets. Uh, and that's because they're a safe type of storage exactly for that. Things like connection strings, which you can see here, right? We have like our database. You'll see if you create a database in your app, these connection strings go directly into our storage automatically, um, as well as other you know things that you might store. For example, if you uh, you know authenticate with some advanced services, sometimes they'll give you like a, a JSON token or something, like this giant long string. You could actually just stuff it into secrets and not have to worry about keeping it in your file system. And it should only be accessed via backend services. Now, agent's going to do this by default, but what do I mean? Well, if you have a website, you can think about the things people see on the website as client side, right? Like, hey, they can see the text, they can see images, etc. These are being served to the client, the browser. Our apps in Replit are built with a client and a server does computationally heavy things and processes data. Um, and so it's actually much more secure to surface things 
in the server that are sensitive, like secrets, you don't want to expose them to the client because anyone can see anything that happens on the client. There are ways of using a console or, or looking at logs to basically see everything the client does. So we want to keep secrets on the back end. Agent can help you set these up again. Uh, just ask agent, hey, help me configure the secrets for whatever. It'll create the secret for you or you go to the secrets pane. Really straightforward. So some things not to forget about secrets. Store credentials and connection strings as environment variables. Access them in code with your environment. Don't hard code secrets uh, in the file system. Agent's going to do that by default, but I have to say that obligatory vibe coding, do not hard code secrets. We've said it three times now. We're good. Only access them with backend services. Agent's going to help you out with all of these things. It's by default in Replit, but you have to double check. That's kind of like the vibe coding credo. Um, so store API keys or tokens here. Don't forget to double check. Uh, I think this is a larger point about building with any tool. If you build something, you're kind of responsible for it, you know? And I'm a, a representative of Replit, and I think it's super important that we do all that we can. Um, and I try to hold myself and us to a really high standard. But if you write code, you know, if you create something, you have to know how it works and you have to double check. Not crazy, you know, just double check. We have security scanner, we have ways. Security scanner, by the way, will pick up if any of your secrets are hard coded or anything like that. So just type in security scanner, go to that tab. That's a great way to double check this. So secret setup, set up environment variables for my API keys, help me integrate in Thropic. It'll ask you for a secret that easy to ask agent. So you're covered on Replit. That's really what I want to drive home here. Agent can set everything up. There are seven days of database history and retention. You can roll those back anytime. The same thing is actually true of checkpoints. You can always roll those back even further than seven days. And we have separate dev prod databases. So you really should never break production, um, as well as these file system checkpoints that I talk about. Never lose your work. You can take your code with you anywhere that you go. It's really great. Um, and finally, for the app storage, it's backed by Google Cloud. A lot of our services or deployments are backed by Google Cloud as well. So. Basically, enterprise-grade reliability, you can build some really cool, powerful stuff on Replit. That's what we're driving home here. Uh, so just to recap, there are four different types of storage in Replit. There's the file system, which is where your code goes. There's our database, which is for structured or semi-structured data. We have app storage for files and multimedia. And we have secrets, which is for API keys or extremely, extremely sensitive data. Um, an agent builds with all of these things. Uh, using best practices. So right blood agent can set up your storage databases and secrets automatically. You can lean on agent for best practices and advice. Agent knows everything about the product um, as well as our docs. So you check out our docs if you haven't yet. I'll put a link in the description uh, to do so. So that was my masterclass on Replit storage. Um, hopefully you know what to use and when as well as what's possible in your Replit environment. Um, if you have any notes or any other things that you'd love to see videos on, uh, drop a note in the comments. I read all those, but until next time, peace.